are you sure? I'm positive. Video? Audio? Yes, we're good. Okay. I feel confident. Okay. Well, that's what you said last time. <laughs> I feel double confident. All right. Hello and welcome Hello. to episode 18 of Bitches in Business. Hello. Excited to be here. We missed a week, <laughs> but we're back. Yes. I must say, I like the whole holding the microphone thing. Yeah, I definitely prefer it. As much as I like to talk with my hands, you I can so just I talk with one hand. That's true. So if I wave around the mic, I'm very sorry. <laughs> <laughs> also, you'll see that we are in comfy clothes today. Yeah. And that is just because we darn well feel like it. Yeah. We felt like it. So, And Allie looks like a housewife. <laughs> in her amazing new outfit. Thank you. It's gorgeous. Just got a new loungewear outfit and I just wanted to wear it someplace other than my living room. So I love loungewear. I need better loungewear. Yes. Now now that loungewear is a thing, oh, I'm yeah. gonna need better stuff to keep up Absolutely. with the Joneses. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Super cute. Love Thank it. Thank you. All right, what is our drink for the week? Okay, so our cocktail of the day is a lovely vodka martini. Um, I like mine dirty. So, I do not. Uh, yeah, well, today you She's will. forcing me to I, drink dirty yes. martinis. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, each cocktail has two ounces of Grey Goose, a little splash of vermouth, and a whole bunch of olive juice. And a whole bunch. That's garnish, what makes it dirty. Garnish of olives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, the funny thing about, well, not funny thing, I guess, but interesting thing just about martinis, gin and vodka martinis, is there's so many different ways to make them. Mm-hmm. So, you know, more dirty means more olive juice, less dirty. Um, burnt is when you yes. ring it with scotch before you yes. make it. Um, with a twist is with a lemon zest or lemon yep. peel in there. What are some other different things that you can Dry, do? Dry, more means vermouth. More vermouth. Yep. Which is kind of funny. Wet, less vermouth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, which is kind of interesting. So I find people who drink vodka and gin martinis are incredibly particular about how yes. they're made. For me, I just order it very dirty. I just got to get into them more. Yeah, so which is funny because making me suffer. I absolutely hate anything pickled. I hate pickles. I hate I love pickles. anything that is pickled. But I love olives and um, olive juice. Isn't that see I where know. I love pickles? Hate olives. Yeah. So you can eat all of my olives. I will. <laughs> all right. Well, um, okay. Should well, we do a bottoms up? Ellie? Let's do a bottoms up. Let's do a bottoms up. I mean, why not? We've never done one on this show before. So I'm going to need two hands. I win. <laughs> Ugh. Olives. You did win. You're very good at this. <laughs> Ugh. Should we drink the real one now? Should we drink the real one? <laughs> yes. So just all- kidding. That was just water. For all of you that are watching us that on... Was oh, thanks. For all of you that are watching us on YouTube, we definitely did the bottoms up, but it was actually just water. For and all those that were listening, you did not get to be part of the joke. So um, this actually is our real... Is real vodka. Dirty martini. So cheers. <laughs> cheers. Not my thing. Mm. I love it. Well, Allie will likely be drinking two dirty mm. martinis. So, Allie, um, it's been a couple of weeks since we've done this. We had a bit of a break. Um, last week, I was quite sick, and I was also doing a virtual conference throughout most of the week, so didn't really make sense to do an episode, so no. we've got lots to talk about this week, which yes. is great. So let's just start pulling out our notes. Um, First things first, I'll just kind of touch on um, the conference that I was doing. It was for the BC Lodging and Camping Association, which we are members of through Pack Rim. Um, Really interesting just getting to meet with a bunch of campgrounds, uh, resorts, owners throughout BC, as well as Parks Canada, Parks BC, um, a lot of different vendors as well, not only in BC, but actually a lot throughout the States. And then we got to do a lot of education seminars that was just talking about the new trends that they're seeing in the camping industry and how to kind of get better value as a park owner from your resort. Things like the big trends that they've been seeing through COVID, um, which is actually kind of interesting that this industry sees it, which I know other industries do, is rude customers and how to deal with that. Yeah. And just finding that there's more and more entitled customers that they're dealing with that expect something, you know, 
more and tend to be rude to their chef about it. So there was a whole like one hour seminar about that, wow. which is so unfortunate that we have to teach that. I know. Now. I know. Like, how about just don't be an asshole? Exactly. I try to never be an asshole. Same. So I, it finds it, it, it's shocking that that seems to happen to everybody. Yeah. But so, yeah, anyways, it was a really um, interesting conference for sure. I, I learned a lot just kind of about the industry and how we can maybe help it, which is awesome. So cool. I know. How has your week been so far? Um, my week's been good. Yes. Um, well, we had that your mom's birthday party on Saturday. Yes. yes. Which was amazing. It was so nice to like go to a real party. And feel like having a party again. Yeah. Yeah. So my, my mom turned 60. And so we had a, a big bash. Um, wasn't really, of course, what we thought that it was going to be originally. No, but but. Um, I think we made it work. We did it at her house, which is where I also got married. So a lot of our family and friends were already kind of familiar with mm-hmm. it. And she's got a great house for anything entertaining absolutely you know, big games room downstairs with pool tables we had a photo booth and a dj we danced until after midnight we did i think i danced solidly from like 8 p.m to midnight yeah, i love it it was a lot of fun and a lot of people were kind of saying the same thing that they haven't been to a party like that yeah. in a really long time so i'm glad that we did it yeah me too mm-hmm. and just a shout out to um bob at primetime dj he's fantastic um he's you know dancing behind his little booth yeah, and he did such a good his job. songs yeah he was great and yeah. he, he really reads the room and reads the dance floor yeah. and you know i had already kind of told him we really love 60s 70s and 80s music yeah. and he did great with just throwing in some whatever you know that kind of fit in with the genre and then we were all obviously giving him requests yeah but yeah that was a great time and then um another shout out to revelry photo booth um so they had a really great setup just a camera there you can do still photos gifs or gifs however you pronounce it (laughs) and boomerangs and then you can text it or email it to yourself right from the camera which was awesome Mm -hmm. i mean we were all in there solidly for those three hours oh yeah it was really fun yeah really fun so yeah it was it was a great time I'm glad that we did that. My mom had people at her house from like Wednesday to Wednesday. Like the, some of them went home today. Wow. Yeah. But my mom loves that. She yeah. likes to entertain and have people around. Mm-hmm. So now she kind of feels a little bit melancholy because everyone's gone home. And yeah. it's like, oh, now I got to get back to reality, mm-hmm. you know, but I like that you just said melancholy. That's my word of the day. Wow. Oh, it's a good not, word. It's not my word of the day. What is your word of the day? I don't have a word of the day. <laughs> Maybe I should have a word of the day. Yeah. Like word of the day, toilet paper, oh, or yeah, like that. word of the day, calendars. Yeah. Okay, I'll work on that. <laughs> you know what we should have is, um, like, you know, have you ever seen when Jimmy Fallon does this where they have like a list of secret words that they have to put into the conversation oh, yeah, yeah. and the other person doesn't know what it is? We should have like a list of words up on the bulletin board uh, that we have to squeeze into the podcast yes. every week. That would be funny. That would be really funny. Okay, we'll work on that. Okay. <laughs> if anyone has any suggestions, please yes, DM us. Yes, DM us. Please let us know. Um... Oh, there was something else I wanted to ask people to DM us about, and now I've lost it, but that's okay. Okay. Anyways, so tonight is part three of the Real Housewives reunion special for Beverly Hills. Last week's episode was really interesting, and I had kind of mentioned to Allie, it made me have a little bit more empathy towards Erica. Yes. We actually got to see, I think, a little bit more of a genuine side of her and a little bit deeper into kind of what she's dealing with, Mm -hmm. which made me feel better for how she had been not acting throughout the whole season. Yeah. So I'm intrigued to see how it goes tonight because last week we only talked about her divorce with Tom, not necessarily the lawsuit that's going on with Tom. Right. And we were we were talking a little bit before and we're like, well, what have we not what has not been addressed? And we just couldn't really think of it at the time. But no one has asked her, like, what happened to your son? Why was it snowing in Pasadena? Yeah. And I wonder if they are going to talk about that. Oh, they, they have to. They Andy have has to. to bring it up. I mean, Andy's really good at asking those questions that everybody yes. else is thinking. And he's really good at calling people out. Oh, 100%. <laughs> yes. Yeah, actually, I forgot about that. I'm intrigued. Um, I saw a TikTok the other day of Tom, and he did not look very good. Oh. And a lot of people... <laughs> did you spill all over your brand new... I just spilled, like, down... <laughs> my bra yeah that's fine who cares um anyways this video of tom he yeah he really didn't look very good and a lot of people were commenting and saying that 
you you can visibly look at him and tell that he either has like Alzheimer's or dementia or he just does not seem yeah, with it. Yeah, well, did you see, I mean, this is kind of old news, but like when he had the black eye. Yes. And people were saying like, oh, he's just doing that for show. So he looks decrepit. Mm, but like, no, no. Look how skinny he is and look how old he looks. Yeah. And that okay. happens to a lot you of can't older fake people. That. Yeah. Well, um, have you heard all the rumors going on? This is like kind of a tangent, but have you heard all the rumors going on right now with the queen? No. So the queen has been um, in the hospital for a few days. Okay. And I mean, she's quite old. Yeah. She's, I think, 98. Yeah. She's like pushing 100, I yes. think. Yeah. And um, so I saw a TikTok yesterday of her doing a Zoom meeting with somebody okay. and how they were saying that they had put a lot of makeup on her to make her look better than she was but when they did a side view of her you could see bruises on her arms which happens a lot as you get older well not to mention if she's in the hospital if she's getting IVs, IVs yeah. exactly and then they were also just pointing out that she looks a lot skinnier and that like her clothes were kind of hanging off of her a little bit mm-hmm. compared to say eight months ago right but so it's a similar thing with Tom I mean as you get older when you have injuries like that they are more apparent. Oh, yeah. You know, and you don't recover from them as fast. No. And it's not abnormal when you have something like Alzheimer's or dementia to not necessarily know how that stuff kind of happened yeah. or not know, you know, just, you're not in your right mind. No, totally. And I, it was interesting how um, some somebody wrote in and said, oh, well, Tom seemed totally with it when he was telling that story. And right. she was like, no, he's on a loop. He was telling that story over and over and over again. And how all the women said, yeah, it's all stories about his past. Yeah. It's not current things that he's talking about. Yeah, and that's very normal for somebody who has Alzheimer's or dementia, of course. And she said, you know, he couldn't tell anybody's name in that room, which is probably true. Yeah, it's kind of interesting with these kinds of shows because you really only get a glimpse into what's happening. You know, you don't get the full picture in any way, shape or form, even though they're filming everything that's going on, but they're not filming everything either. And you don't, and Erica was so reserved anyways, you didn't really see a whole lot about what was going on in her home life where the other women you do see what's going on. Mm -hmm. You only really see Erica when she comes out to events and never with Tom. No, So there's really nothing to compare it to. Yeah. ultimately but yeah i thought that was um very interesting i i saw a little bit of a different side of her that i had seen in previous seasons which mm-hmm. i was happy about because i had a little bit more respect for her than i have you know yeah so i'm intrigued to see what more we're going to get out of it i mean we have two more full episodes yeah i'm stuff. really excited to see what uh, what else comes up mm-hmm. um yeah it's just it is interesting mm-hmm. yeah so, and speaking of which, Allie has a new book okay, that she brought. So, I have this new book. Um, it's called Not All Diamonds and Rosé. It's by Dave Quinn. And it is very interesting. It's a very long book. And it's all about the housewives. Yes. I've already finished reading it. Oh, really? Yeah. So, it's about it's all about the housewives throughout every single franchise within the United States. Yes. And this is like literally over 400 pages of. and it's just a tell-all kind of thing yeah so he interviewed um tons and tons mm, of people I like see. all the producers and like most of the housewives are in this book. gotcha so he interviewed everybody and so it's not all the new stuff though which is like kind right. of unfortunate like he had to do a cutoff which was i think last november 2020 mm, so and there's so, nothing in there about erica no no there's nothing in here about erica before so mm-hmm. or from like new stuff so it's very interesting and it's kind of like for each franchise there's like there's something massive that's revealed it, oh, isn't that that wasn't revealed on the show? Yes. Oh, that's interesting. So, for instance, New Jersey. This has never been talked about. I know you don't know no. who any of these people are, no. but um, at one point, like years ago, they were all in um, the Dominican Republic, and that shows different from other shows in that the entire family will go on the, the trips. Oh, even the guy, the the husbands, the, husbands, the kids, kids, like everybody will go. Yeah, which is very so, different. Yeah, exactly. So um, they were all in um, a nightclub and Teresa Judice was there with her husband, uh, Caroline and Albert Manzo and their kids. They have older kids. Mm-hmm. So they were there. Um, Joe Gorga, Melissa Gorga, and like a bunch of other people. And they were all partying. Um, 
Okay, I'm really what? sorry, but I just, I have to do one thing. Okay, finish your story, and then I have to do one thing. I have someone coming to buy something from me off oh of Marketplace, and I said God. that I would put it outside on the doorstep for 4.30, and I forgot to do that, oh, and no. it's Jessica who listens to our podcast, oh, hi, and, Jessica. I, <laughs> and I told her that we were going to be recording, so finish your story, and then I will go and do okay. it. Okay, so basically, <clears throat> um, they were all partying, and um, Teresa was like shooting champagne everywhere Mm -hmm. and they were up dancing on this kind of like pedestal thing and she was spraying champagne on people down below and they got really pissed off and the (sighs) nightclub was like packed and then all of a sudden like people just started fighting like it was like everyone just started fighting like there was these guys that came and were like punching people in the face and oh my like gosh. Lauren Manzo almost got punched in the face by a man like who does oh, that wow. oh super crazy and so um, how do you not like I'm sorry but if you don't get at least one drink spilled on you or something when you're in a nightclub oh, totally. like how do you not like, expect people that people knew who they were and they're like yeah. oh these stupid Jersey bitches are here and like it was like oh a my really gosh, big that's deal ridiculous. these people were like Stay there. They have these people, they had security guards with them, and so then they were starting to attack the security guards and saying, calling them the N word. What? And like it was really, really bad. So this massive fight breaks out. So then the next day, um, Joe Gorga and Melissa Gorga were already gone. That no one knew who they were yet. They hadn't the show hadn't aired with them on it yet, mm-hmm. so no one knew who they were. So they left, and then um, a bunch of the guys got their passports taken away and they were detained. And oh my god, oh yeah, so like they were like. They had to wait around for like over a week. It was like the Bravo executives, it, NBC. What? In the Dominican? Yes. NBC. Oh, I wonder who's paying for that. Oh, yeah. Well, it, it was all taken care of by Bravo and NBC. Because wow. like, what else are they going to do? And they had their passports taken away. So they had to get the lawyers involved. And then they finally got passports and they flew home. And it was never, ever talked on about the on show. the show. Or what season elsewhere. did that happen in? Oh, I don't know. Isn't that crazy how they don't even bring that up? Because that's no. like a, that's it's a pretty a really major big thing deal. that happened so i wonder if it's just i'm sure bravo doesn't really want to but know but it was like it was a legal thing know. because they were trying to get charged right. they were trying to charge them with assault and there's just there was no oh evidence anywhere because everyone had a totally different story and everyone was drunk everyone was at the club and like it was just crazy that's insane yeah oh my god that's crazy yeah see i mean it just goes to show that like anything can really happen mm-hmm. right Okay, let's take a quick break. I'm going to go and put that stuff outside, and then I want to continue talking about this because I know of a story that's in the book that I would like you to talk about. Okay, so sounds good. So, sorry about that. That's okay. Um, I wasn't really planning on talking about um, Jersey or any of the other franchises, really, because you haven't seen them. I haven't seen any of them. But, um... Um, okay, well, I really so, want to read the book because I've heard, so good. like I've heard that it's really interesting. And yeah. I mean, you just got that book like a couple days ago, and yeah. you already read the whole thing. Oh, yeah. So I'm I sure was, it was like, I, really I couldn't good. put it down, but like it separated into different franchises, so you could like just read the Beverly oh, Hills chapter. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, yeah, that's neat. Is there some that like had to go into multiple chapters because there was just too much information, no, or um, he just no? They're just really long chapters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so. There's some interesting stuff about Beverly Hills that came up, Ooh, okay. which I mean, it really confirmed what we already knew about Lisa Vanderpump is that like uh, she's been manipulating the story for oh, what a since the beginning of time. Yeah. And so there was a lot of things that were confirmed, especially um, the Lucy Lucy Apple Juicy controversy. Oh, okay. the producer said she absolutely planted the story. Oh, what a surprise. And when she when this when her plan didn't go out like how she thought it was going to go, she panicked. Mm-hmm. She set, sold the story so that she could get her narrative out there. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, and sorry, uh, I, for those of you who don't know what this is about, I mean, it's, if you don't watch the show, then obviously none of this will make sense. But, um, even if you kind of, you know, have just started Beverly Hills or whatever, it's about Dorit and she had adopted a dog from Lisa Vanderpump's mm-hmm. store or dog, um, dog, dog rescue. Dog rescue. Yeah. And then um, the dog apparently bit her, allegedly bit Dorit's child on the lip. Yes. Um, PK, her <laughs> husband. PK on the lip. And nipped at the kids. 
And they tried to, they say that they tried to rehome the dog and they, they rehomed the dog to another person. Yeah. And that person then put the dog up for adoption, took it to a kennel or an SPCA or something like that. Right. And then, or a, it was a kill kill shelter. shelter. Um, Dorit says they don't kill dogs there. I don't know. Right. And so Lisa Vanderpump's thing was that when Dorit adopted the dog, she signed a contract that said that if you have an issue with the dog, you're not to be taking it to somewhere like a kill shelter. Because the whole point of this dog rescue is... You bring the dog back. You bring the dog back and and they find a new home. Exactly. And the reason that she knew that the dog was taken to the shelter is because they have microchips. Right. And so they scanned the microchip and it was a Vanderpump dog. So they knew to call. And it was a big deal. And so... You know, Lisa's thing was, well, Dorit, why wouldn't you tell me that this was going on? Why would you just rehome the dog? And Dorit said, well, I did try to tell you. Did she not? No. What was Dorit's reason for not? Her reason, she didn't have a reason. She just thought that she was doing the right thing. Right. By finding it a good home. This woman really wanted the dog. And so she thought the dog. Had a good home for it. She thought that Lucy was going to a really good home. And she didn't know know what the outcome was going to be. Yeah. So um, then Lisa sold the story to the tabloid saying that Dorit um, gave the dog up to a kill shelter right. and blah, blah, blah. So And it caused a big rift between oh, a lot of the huge. ladies. It ended up with Lisa leaving the show because she's being accused of lying about selling a story, which and she was. And this wasn't the first time that she's been accused of that. And it's not the first time that she's been accused of manipulating yeah. the situation. And for the first few seasons, how many seasons was she on? Six? Six or seven? Vanderpump? No. Yeah, like what? 10, 9 or 10. Oh, yeah, I guess so, because we're in season, what, 11 right now? Oh, yeah, we're in 11. Okay, so I guess 9 then. Sure, yes. And so that was the kind of thing throughout each season that she was on. You could kind of tell what the storyline was going to be for that season, and Lisa always had something to do with it, even if it wasn't her that was doing the manipulation, She or, you know, the oh, she actual would always, action of she it. She would always keep her hands clean. She would never bring it up. She yes. would just prompt somebody else to bring it up. So at one point, it was um, let's talk about Taylor's um, abusive husband. Right. Um, she prompted Camille to bring it up. Um, there was a tabloid rumor that Kyle's husband was cheating on her. Maurice too. Yeah. And um, she had the tabloids and she put them in Brandy's suitcase and said, bring them on the trip. Yes. Um, what else? Oh, the Munchausen thing. Lisa With Rinna. Yolanda. So, okay. So, Apparently, Rinna was the one who mentioned it. Right. She said, like, in the first place, because they, you know, they gather um, with the producers at the beginning of the season and go, hey, what's been going on? What are the rumors that have been going on? Like, Mm -hmm. what are you guys talking about? And Rinna said, well, somebody I I knew, somebody I know um, thinks that... um, Yolanda is not really sick and mm-hmm. she has Munchausen so I don't really know what that is and Vanderpump got a hold of it and was like oh you need to bring that up right and you created need to bring it, it into a storyline and <clears throat> Rena was like I don't think I want to do that like it's mean and then Lisa kept pushing and it she and then Rena brought it up mm. and uh, then she backtracked because she was like no 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 I can't do this <laughs> similar to what Teddy did right and that's when Vanderpump said oh there goes our storyline Ah, uh, yes. Okay. That yeah. makes sense. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's very interesting. So basically in the book, they've confirmed that that dog situation specifically, yes. Lisa absolutely planted that story, sold the story yes. to the tabloids. Which she still maintains to this day that she did not do. How do they have proof of that? Like have the tabloids come forward and said, yes, no, for sure. No, the tabloids like, have not because they probably legally can't. They, right. I'm sure that they've signed something saying that they won't give up their sources. Right. But one of the producers said that he knew, uh, he okay. knew that she did it. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, people always question if this show is scripted and I mean, it's not scripted, but obviously the producers do have a hand in kind of how things come out, yeah. how storylines get played out, but they're not specifically directing anything and by saying this is a storyline that you guys are going to talk about and like no they know. just ask questions to right. get the conversation going exactly and then everything tends to fall in line exactly <laughs> so oh, yeah that's very interesting yeah well, and not surprising yeah 
So, I mean, this book is very, very interesting. Um, season two almost didn't air at all, even though they were done filming, really? because Russell um, committed suicide. Right. And the tabloids spin that in such a, like, a gross way of, like, reality TV drove him to this, which is, like, not, not true, true at not all. Not true at all. Not true at all. No. He was in a very, very bad financial situation because of... His, his own, own doing. doing. He was stealing from people and embezzling, yeah, embezzling money. With his um, partner. Yes. Yeah, so um, there's that. And he was also very abusive towards Taylor. There was yes. a lot of details about that. Yeah. Like they went to the Super Bowl and they got into a big fight and he actually broke her jaw and her what? jaw came out of place. Oh my god. And she was that's like scary. Oh yeah, she was like leaned over the toilet just drooling and she's trying to pop her jaw back into place. Russell wouldn't call an ambulance and she couldn't talk. Wow. So, that's terrible. Yeah, really it's really, really horrible. Yeah, that's really sad. I mean, well, <clears throat> even what she was kind of talking about on the show, I mean, it's it seemed toxic. It didn't seem like they had a very good relationship. I was really shocked though when I watched that season because I didn't know that that was yeah. the outcome. So then all of a sudden when it talked about that, I was really, really shocked. Yeah. So that's actually when I started watching because I didn't watch season one. And then I you know I was buying the magazines at that time. Right. That was, I don't even know when that was, like mm-hmm. 2000. 10 or something yeah yeah so like i was buying those types of magazines and i was like whoa what is this show this sounds super dramatic yeah, and crazy. really crazy and like i kind of know who these people are because beverly hills people were like kind of famous well and lisa Rinna. i mean she's been well she wasn't well, on the show then no i guess that's true but she's been very you know well known for yeah, a long time well, that's she was um she actually was in talks to be on season one and oh. she was on the short list, but then they didn't cast her because they didn't want any real actresses on the show. Right. They it, wanted nobodies for yeah, the first and little like bit. Kyle and, and, and Kim were actresses, but they hadn't been on TV in a for long, a long time. time. And Lisa Vanderpump, like I knew her name as well. I don't know why, but I did know what her name was. And so same kind of thing, you know, well-known people, but not really. It's not like they're in the forefront A-list no. actors or anything. Yeah. Hmm, that's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so for all you uh, Housewives lovers, you should definitely buy this book, it sounds like. Yeah. It sounds very interesting. Yeah. Well, Melanie sent me an article the other day, and I had already heard this story about Sonia with the cigarette. <gasps> oh, my God. But I didn't really read anything. That's the only thing I know is the headline. Yeah, so Heather Thompson said that... Sonia got so drunk one time she saved her because these guys were like she was like hanging out with these guys and they Mm -hmm. were putting lit cigarettes into her vagina like that's fucked it is and I mean if you see Sonia on TV like it's not really that surprising Mm -hmm. But, like, that's pretty shocking, and it sounds like... That's a lot of information to come out in a book. Oh, absolutely. (laughs) It's a lot, and it sounds like this is, like, the drama that's coming out Mm -hmm. from the book seems to be, like, leaking into the shows. Oh, I see. Okay. So, now... Uh, Sonia's obviously pissed off that Heather Heather's not on the show anymore but right. she's pissed off that Heather would even was bring talking it up. about that yeah and um, so that's we, happening right now right on the now, show I heard Leah um, posted something about cigarettes on her hmm. Instagram that was like a dig at Sonia oh, that's like, interesting it's yeah but so when did this book come out is like for last week oh that's interesting (laughs) okay so this is all happening in real time now yeah Ooh, this is very interesting it's yeah it is it's very very juicy and Mm -hmm. there's just all kinds of stuff about i want to read all the shows it's so good oh that's so cool oh i guess salt lake city wouldn't be in there though because it's it's such a new it's such a new franchise yeah bummer that's not because it didn't premiere before november 2020 unfortunately yeah, i guess so oh that's so cool yeah if you're a fan of the housewives you should pick up this book and read it sounds really interesting yes also i mean we're going on a tangent about housewives for a long time but um i have hey you and i just found i just saw that real housewives of melbourne is back and i thought that oh. show was canceled and so three episodes came out on Hey You and I watched them all like in one day. Really? They're so good. I've never watched it is the so Melbourne one. Good. Or... And they don't beep out on the other swear. So they're like, fuck this, fuck I'm that. I'm sorry, oh, but I like, love it. Hey You and any, pl- <laughs> well, Netflix doesn't, but like Hey You, you don't need to bleep it. No. I'm sorry. Like no. w- we're adults. I know. I think they just get it like that from Bravo. Probably. But like we know, we know what the words are. We know what they're saying. Just do it. Yeah. Who and cares? Melbourne is nasty. Well, because they say the C word, don't they? They say whatever they want. Yeah. 
That's crazy. Oh, it's hilarious. Yeah, I should probably watch it. I, I'm finally caught up on Salt Lake City. And so then, you know, now I can start to maybe venture into some of the other ones. I liked New York, but I'm kind of meh about it. I might try one of the other franchises. Yeah, you I don't come know. come back to it another time. I might, I might come back to it. I think New York is my favorite, but mm-hmm. I just really love them all. Well, they're all so different from each other. They are. It's, yeah. It's comparing apples to oranges. Exactly. To peaches. To papayas. To diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> to rosé. <laughs> um, yeah, I would like to watch the New Jersey one, I think, yeah. as well. So who knows? I really like New Jersey in, mm-hmm. in its own way. And it's very much like a family show. Like the, yeah. the wives don't go on trips by themselves right hardly they bring ever all their husbands Everyone. and everything yeah well i kind of like that about salt lake city too like the the men seem to get together for drinks and kind of chat yeah. about stuff which i thought was interesting it makes it seem a little bit more real yeah so i mean not that you know it's reality but anyways just saying <laughs> um I've been watching Peaky Blinders a lot. I just started watching the first episode I watched maybe like a week and a half ago and I've been binging it and now I'm like halfway through season three and I'm obsessed with it. So I've kind of put everything else on the back burner and that's all I've been watching. And then when that's done, because I think there's only five seasons, when that's done, I can start to like watch other stuff. But that's what I do. I just dive into a show. Yeah. (laughs) And then it takes up all my time. Totally. Yeah. Um, Okay. So speaking of which, the new Bachelorette season just started. So um, it was episode two last night. Now, you are not really a big Bachelorette fan or Bachelor watcher. I watch it, but like, eh. That's kind of how I am too. (laughs) Like, I watched um, JoJo's season first, and then I I waited a couple, and then I watched Becca's, then Colton's, which was insane. Yeah, I haven't seen any of those. Okay, well, Becca's season was really good. Jeremy and I both started watching Becca's season together, because it just kind of like, the first episode came on one day after something else we were Mm -hmm. watching, and so we just watched it, and then we got really invested, and it was a really, really good season. And then we had to watch Colton's season, because Colton was such a freaking, like, like drama space case. It's Colton the gay one. Yes. Okay. Now he's gay. First he was a virgin. Now he's <laughs> now gay. He's gay. <laughs> First he was a virgin. Now he's out. Now he's gay. Um, which was honestly kind of ridiculous because when he was on his season, he r- fell in love with Cassie. He we ended up picking. And literally, she said to him, yeah, I just don't really know, like, if I'm ready for a commitment. I just don't know what I want. And then he goes to meet her family and her dad's like, yeah, you know, I just don't really know if, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I have work, just called my work phone and now it's calling my real oh, phone and I have to take this. So we're taking another break. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. I'm very sorry. Um work just never really stops sometimes okay so anyways i have kind of skipped seasons here and there oh i wanted to mention one thing before we move on yes yes colton oh god yeah jackie schimmel called it from the beginning really she she used to talk about the bachelor and the bachelorette all the time Mm -hmm. and then she kind of just got over it yeah and she was watching colton season i remember i'd never seen it before but she was saying from day one that he is gay really yes. oh that's interesting yes and she said i never got you know, that vibe from him in the first she season got it, and this is highly inappropriate mm-hmm. um but she said um he is not a virgin there's a thing called the poop hole loophole oh my god and so there you go that's kind of funny i'm like not trying to be offensive like when i like said like now he's gay like that's not what I mean I just <laughs> no I know it's just kind of yeah, like yeah. you watch him on Becca's season and you know he, she was really like into him and it, they really played up the whole virgin thing yeah and then they do him as a bachelor and they played up the whole virgin thing so much that it was like kind of embarrassing and unbearable a little bit yeah you know and then he picks this girl who was so not into him and it was very very clear to everybody except for him and like literally there was jokes about how like maybe that was like the safe option for him maybe it was maybe but but the unfortunate thing was there was Tasha, who's now one of the hosts on the bachelorette she was like so into him Uh, and and but maybe you're right i mean maybe he just wasn't super comfortable with himself and what was going on so maybe maybe that wasn't out for him he must have known that he was gay 
well i'm sure i'm sure you know your whole life that you're gay yeah. but yeah it's i'm i think that you're probably right that he probably got to a point where he really wasn't comfortable with what was going on so it probably was easier for him to pick somebody who also wasn't very sure about it yeah as a way out you know yeah. and so then i didn't watch hannah brown season because no, she either. also was a bit much um and then Melanie wanted to do a bachelorette pool. Yeah. And so I love any excuse to gamble. So I'm like, sure, that sounds like a great idea. Yeah. So I'm doing now, horrible, by the way. <clears throat> well, you moved into second place. I did? I believe so. I don't think so. I think I'm second oh, to last. You're in last. Jeremy's in in second to sorry. Jeremy's you're in, in last. last. No, you're in last no, now. I'm Jeremy's not. in second no, to I last. No, I checked today. <laughs> Jeremy's in last place. He didn't even play last okay, week. Okay, that's what I meant. You moved into second to last place. That's what I meant. Okay, so anyways. So we decided to do this bachelorette pool. So it's like a bracket. You pick your six guys yeah. every week and then you get points for things that they do or you get deducted points for things that they do. It's been really fun. I wish I would show you what you did to earn those points and to lose points. Well, did you see there? They sent out an email today that was a whole like summary of the entire episode. Oh, I, didn't see that. I had I didn't realize it last week, but I read it t- this week and it talks about the different points and mm-hmm. who got those points each week. So or this episode. Yep. So I noticed I'm going to follow that a little bit more. And it also talked about a whole point scale of every single guy and how many points they got. So you can pay attention to like next week who you want to pick yeah but the first week I was like okay I read their bios I kind of picked who I thought she'd be interested in and then I was I I did pretty good on it but Mm -hmm. there was a couple of guys who I thought no way she'd be into yeah like the guy who showed up in the table yeah so he showed up at a table and he had like like he was in a restaurant like he was had his head on a platter and she opened (laughs) up the platter lid and he was there he hung out in the stupid table for like hours they kept showing him in this table it was ridiculous I was yelling at the TV get out of the table what are you still doing in there we get it yeah well there was a guy but she loved him well there was a guy on last season on like Claire's season and he showed up in a like a box in a box and he was in the box for a long time I don't remember him being in a box. Claire's <laughs> season was also ridiculous. Yeah. So she falls in love with Dale the minute that he gets out of the limo. She was like, she like they sp- met before. No, they didn't. They did not meet before. Well, if that's come out since then, then I don't know. But I don't remember that being on the show. Yeah, they, they all blend together. Uh, mm, are you thinking about Peter with Kelly? Nope. Okay. I'm not. Anyways, as soon as he got out of the limo, she was like, I th- I think I found the man I'm going to marry. Yeah. Like immediately. Yeah. And then she spent all of her time with him. And on like the fourth episode, <laughs> she was like, I'm done. I found him. And all the guys were pissed. That's and then they I brought in watching. Tasha. That's when I stopped watching too. Because then they bring in Tasha. And Tasha now has to deal with all these the guys same who are guys? in love with like, Claire. That just makes no sense. I know. Yeah. I so like how unfortunate that. for Tasha. That they're yeah. all like, oh, I'm here for Claire. Oh, no, now I'm here for you. Like, that's just bizarre. No. So, yeah, uh, this season is already, it's only been the second episode, and it's very interesting. Like, okay, LT is what's his face's grandson. I always forget. Clint Eastwood. Oh, okay. right. Clint Eastwood's so grandson is that. LT. Okay. He comes in wearing a tuxedo Speedo and a blazer. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, him. no. You look horrible. Like, that's not... You just look douchey. I'm sorry. Not into it. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about this about this season. Okay, and then what about last night? So, spoiler, spoiler alert. If you have not watched the episode last I mean, night, this will then come out just, on Friday. It's been, like, five days. Oh, so. good call. <laughs> I always forget that. If you haven't watched it, by then now, then it's not you're our probably fault. not going to watch it. Anyways, so... What's with that guy, Jamie, going into her and being like, yeah, so everyone in the house is like really concerned because they heard that you knew Joe beforehand and like we're all talking no, about it and it's kind of becoming concerned. a big deal. <laughs> and like, you know, I don't care. Like it doesn't bother me, but there's a lot of other people that are bothered by it. And I just think that maybe like you should address it. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, he's the only one who cares. He's the and only who one who knows about he's it. He's the only one who mentioned it. He's the only one. And then so she comes out and says this to everybody and the guys are all like, what? Who? Where did this come from? But I can't who believe knew no one this? said anything. Like, I'm sure they're all probably like, what are you talking about? But like, she was just. One, she I was, felt bad for her because she was like, does anybody want to say anything? And no one said And no word. one said anything. 
Like, it would have been nice if somebody was like, hey, I had no idea that this was a thing. I'm really sorry that that happened to you. And I would like to know right now who it was that said that. Yeah. So I think they're all just kind of like a little um, intimidated by that situation because it's really early in the season to already be dealing with this kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, and then he brought it up because he already had a rose. Yeah. No one else could have brought it up. Exactly. And he wants to make himself look better, but it kind of backfired. Um, Yeah. So it always does, by the way. Okay. So let's also talk about the first episode, that guy, Ryan, who brings all these documents of all these like, (laughs) of like tips and tricks and information. Yeah. Like, you don't think that that's going to come out? And how is that making you look good? (laughs) Oh, I just, I've never seen the show before. And like, uh, my sister wanted to give me some information. Like, really? You've never seen the show before? You're going on this show. You've never watched it before? Yeah, I'm not buying that. No, not a thing. It's wild. I'm telling you that. I kind of like Joe. The one that she like met Joe. before oh, yeah so the one that she'd been like messaging back and forth with before i mean he's kind of he's good looking yeah he is good looking. i could see her being into him yeah and they obviously seem to they have a get, lot in common well, exactly they have a lot in common he already lives there they're both very athletic you know yeah um also i think it's kind of it's a weird dynamic this show because you know you get 30 people that are all vying for one person Mm -hmm. and you have to put yourself out there and if you don't like if you watch previous seasons a lot of the time the bachelorette or bachelor always says like you know i need more from you other people are already opening up to me and i need you to let your walls down because if you don't i have to move on with someone else you really you only get so much time with this person yeah when you think about it like a group date you're getting what 20 minutes of actual individual time Mm -hmm. with her that's not a lot of interactions it's not and then if you don't get picked for a one-on-one date i mean how are you supposed to even build that relationship i could never be on the show (laughs) i couldn't i just i couldn't it's a good thing you're married (laughs) (laughs) well that's true but i just i don't know i also think like i said this to jeremy last week so michelle the bachelorette she's like yeah i don't know i just feel like I'm like ready in my life to like find someone and I've been searching and I haven't found anyone. You're 29 years old. Like, I'm sorry, but really you've been searching forever that you haven't found anybody that you have to go on this show. I feel like the bachelor or the bachelorette should be like 40 plus. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I'm sorry. Well, like, okay. So there is going to be a seniors bachelor. There is. Yes. There. Oh, I didn't they, know that. Yeah. Last season. Um, whatever that was, uh, Peter. No, that not, was a horrible no, 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 not season. Peter. Katie. Oh, Katie. Katie yeah. season. They would have commercials for uh, the seniors bachelorette or mm, and the bachelor. Okay. But I, see. I don't know what senior means to them because like they were showing like not 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 like, seniors. No, not like seniors. <laughs> oh, that's citizens. silly. So Mi- like it should be middle aged bachelor. It probably <laughs> is middle aged bachelor. Well, that's really weird. But that's <laughs> they should do that yes. because really, I'm sorry, but like, how can you at 29? you've searched everywhere and you haven't found someone like that's <laughs> ridiculous i'm sorry yeah. like whatever totally oh well that's i want to watch that when yeah that oh comes definitely out. yeah Thank you. Oh, i forgot about peter's season peter's season that was, was the horrible. first season i ever watched and i was it like was horrible. i hate the show I'm- it was very it was very slow the entire time and then he was so dramatic so dramatic like oh i just i just need to be alone i just this is just too much to process i'm like oh god it was uh, yeah it was dramatic it was super dramatic absolutely ridiculous anyways what else can we rant and rave about well halloween's coming up. i was just gonna say that it's halloween this weekend so when this comes out it'll be halloween uh not tomorrow two days from now yeah that's so exciting Mm -hmm. i like halloween you know, you're just kind of messing not, about Halloween. It's not my thing. Yeah, you're not into scary movies, gore, no, any of I that kind of stuff. I just don't care. But sometimes it's fun to dress up. You know what's yeah. not fun, though? Like, trying to decide on a costume. That's it's, true. That's fair. Um, Kurt and I went shopping on the weekend to try and find costumes, mm-hmm. and we just, like, didn't find anything. Mm, and then all of a sudden, I had an epiphany, and I picked up my costume, and it just came to me. Really? Yes. And he still has no idea what he's going to do. Oh. So you guys aren't doing a couple's costume? No, we're not. Oh, that's interesting. No, we're not. Oh, cool. I'm into this. So he still has no idea. Well, I texted Dylan today because I he asked me what time the party was. And I said, what are you going as? And he goes, do you want me to ruin it? And I said, no, 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 no I don't, don't want to know. know. And he said, it's very simple, but 
amazing or something like that. I'm like, I think it'll be very funny. I'm sure that it will. He said it's very me, like as in him. So I'm very interested. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. I bet you it is going to be like a farmer or something. Cause how easy would that be for him? Yeah. That's kind of lame. I hope it's better than that. I'm sure it will be. He's very (laughs) clever. He is very clever. So yeah, I'm excited. I was every single year I do this where I want to have this like big, amazing, awesome party. And I just want it to be the best party that anyone's ever been to. And then I leave it to the last minute because I can never turn my like work brain off and switch over to something else. And so then I've been trying to find Halloween decorations for the past like week. Everywhere's sold out. Yeah. Everywhere's done. Halloween's over. It's Christmas now. Oh, 100%. Walmart's Christmas. All the dollar stores are Christmas. Everything's Christmas. So apparently I'm just shit out of luck hmm. for Halloween. So I'm just going to have to do my own thing. I'm gonna figure it out. Have you gone to party Patty's Party Palace? No, and they I are actually closing. I should go there because I went to Party City and I was kind of meh about their Halloween decorations and they're really freaking expensive. Yeah, go check out Patty's because um they are closing unfortunately. Yeah, that is really unfortunate. But um, got to support a local well, business. Well, yeah, exactly. And I mean, go and help them get rid of their stock because that's always yeah. the worst thing when you're closing something, especially a retail location, and you have all this stuff left over. So go and check Patty's yeah, well, Party Palace. Are, I don't know. What, what are you supposed, supposed to do with it? I don't know. So go and check them out. That's a really, really yes. good point. Shout out to a local business. Yes, to Pat, that Patty's closed. Party Palace. It's very hard to say. Patty's Party Palace. Yes. Go and check it out. So do you want to know what I'm being? Well, I would like to know, but I kind of also want to wait because I want it to be a surprise. Okay. Because I also shouldn't be biased because they're, we're doing a costume contest. Oh. I'm not judging the costume contest. We're going to do a draw. We're going to do, or no, sorry. We're going to vote. We're going to have votes okay. on each category. So, but I shouldn't know now because then I might decide that you're the best if I know what everyone says. I kind of doubt that. Well, are it's you not being that something amazing. lame? I mean, kind I, that's of. kind of subjective. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not being Sunny and Cher anymore. You're not? I couldn't find, I had a really hard time finding stuff for our costumes. So I got a wig and I got Jeremy a mustache and I got some like hippies, um, like necklaces and stuff. Uh And then I went to a bunch of thrift stores in Value Village and I was trying to find like... Value Village, there was like nothing. Nothing. I was trying to find like a crazy print or a neat dress or bell bottom jeans or like a cool striped sweater, a furry vest. I couldn't find anything. And then I went to a few different thrift stores and I found like, okay, like a pair of pants that I thought could work and like maybe a shirt I thought could work but I wasn't super into it couldn't find anything for Jeremy nothing oh my god so then I switched it up because I was like well I have to have an awesome okay well since this is coming out on Friday why don't we just tell each other what we're being it'll come out the day before oh okay I like this okay so Jeremy and I are now being Grace and Thomas Shelby from Peaky Blinders. But oh. so it's like 1920s so like flapper, basically gangster. So he's okay. going to be like, you know, he's got his suit on and I got him like a newsboy cap and I got like some fake puff cigarettes. Nice. And like I bought, I found this really cute flapper dress for $10 Whoa. at a thrift store. I like that. Yeah. So I'm going to do that. Like, you know, my pearls yeah, and yeah. my long cigarette holder. So that's what Ooh, we're going to do. My costume involves a cigarette too. <gasps> Ooh, really? What is it? Okay. I'm being, and this actually has nothing to do with our best topic but mm, okay um i'm being a real housewife Ooh, how so so i'm not not from the tv not shows from, yes just a housewife i'm wearing gonna, i'm gonna wear like a bathrobe i'm gonna have my That's hair and idea. curlers i'm gonna have a glass of wine <gasps> yes. in one hand and a cigarette in the other hand oh my gosh i love this yeah and you should have tabloids with you like yeah. have magazines or something, maybe even like a little dog. Like don't bring Dobby, but like bring He's like a little big. fake dog or something. <laughs> like have like a purse with a little dog in it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I love that idea. Yeah, you know it would also be good is if you had like a juicy couture, um, oh, sweatsuit suit. or tracksuit. Oh, that is good. Yeah, that That's would be really good, good too. Even like to wear under your bathrobe. You could honestly wear this outfit for yeah, that. Yeah, no, there's a lot of options. So I'm gonna probably decide the day of, but there's certain like that. things that I'm gonna have with my oh, costume cool. that are I gonna like be that fabulous. Idea. Yeah. And Kurt has no idea. No. He could be your real house husband. And do what? Um, okay. So I mean there's like <laughs> trophy husbands where he could just be like in a sweatsuit? I don't know. No, I don't know. He could be like my husband and be like, yeah, like be dress up suit like very fancy. And, yeah, like he could be like on Wall Street. Oh, that, see, that's a good idea. You should do that. Mm, I wonder if he has a suit. Mm-hmm. <gasps> he does. He just bought one for your wedding. <gasps> oh, yes. Perfect. Okay, there you go. See, good okay. idea. Um, also, this is my last episode with long hair. 
What? I'm cutting my hair on Monday. You are? Yeah. Oh my god, how short? Uh, to like my collarbone or maybe a little bit higher than that. Oh my god. I'm very excited. I think that's gonna look really good. Thank you. Um, I've always, wa- I've always wanted to do it for like a really long time. Mm-hmm. And, but I just, I love my hair so much and I've, you know, grown it out for so long. And then I always said to myself that after the wedding, I would finally cut my hair short and like, just try it. Everyone does it. I know. After a wedding. I know. So, well, and honestly, um, my hair has got quite a lot of breakage on the bottom now and it's just, it's not super healthy. And so this is kind of the best time to do it anyways. And I'm just ready for a bit of a change. So I'm doing it Monday morning, 9 a.m. Can't wait to see. I'm very excited. But it's it's hard. Like, I still look at myself in the mirror and I'm like, oh, I love my long curls or I love putting my hair up in a ponytail. And I'm going to miss doing that, you know? Yeah. But at the I same time, you. it's nice to have a change and it's just hair. It'll grow back. But I'm excited. Mm-hmm. So say goodbye. Say goodbye, hair. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> Bye, wig. Bye, wig. <laughs> That's Real Housewives of Atlanta. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny. Um, but yeah, so Halloween, I'm very excited about. It should be a really good weekend. Um, and then I actually have a wedding next weekend. You do? Yeah, and I forgot about it. So I got my nails done last week and I thought, oh, I'm going to do black nails for Halloween. I love black nails. And then I thought, I can't wear black nails Wait, when I'm a bridesmaid. You're a bridesmaid, right? Yeah. And so then I was like, oh, I'm cutting my hair like four days before the wedding. <laughs> and I was like, well, <laughs> too bad. <laughs> like, I already have the appointment and I really want to do it. So now I've been looking up like formal long bob hairstyles <laughs> and like <laughs> formal short updos, things like that. Mm-hmm. So that'll be interesting. And then I'm like, oh God, I have an eyelash appointment the morning of the wedding. I'm like, I should probably change that. <laughs> like, I completely forgot. It just showed up. I can't believe it's November already. I know. Isn't that shocking? It is. I know. This whole year has just gone by so fast. But whatever, I guess that happens when you get old. <laughs> it just keeps going by faster and faster. <laughs> Did you hear that they canceled Lady Smith Light Up again this year? No. Yeah, it's canceled again because oh. of COVID. Hmm. What a bummer. I don't go to that. Have you ever been? No. You've never been? No. It's pretty fun. Um, too much traffic. Yeah, so I will say, like, so you drive all the way there, then you can't find a parking spot anywhere. Yeah. So you yeah. have to park really far away, mm-hmm. and then you have to walk all the way up there to, like, fight your way through... Mm-hmm people mm-hmm. then there's always a lineup at tim hortons so you can never get anything <laughs> even, or to use the bathroom or anything yeah yeah and then the parade's pretty cool and then it's like a mad dash to get back to your car and then to drive your it's oh my god so the whole thing is like a six hour turnaround no, 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 just can't. to see a parade full no, no, of lights no. um, i go on other days also it's on usually um american thanksgiving yes and i'm busy that day that's true so and i usually had to work that day too so yeah well, back in the restaurant days, but yes. not anymore. But yeah, I never didn't realize it was on American Thanksgiving. Yeah, you, you, not not every single year, but most of the time. So what's that? The f- first Thursday in, or the second Thursday no, in the, November? Usually the th- third. third. No, the... F- oh, God, I'm going to get this wrong. I'm not American, okay? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> let's, so, let's sorry. I think, you, it I think it's the third weekend. Or the third Thursday. Why I do think they have you, it on a Thursday? Well, why do we have it on a Monday? I don't know. Well, Monday makes more sense than a Thursday. It is the fourth, because it's the 25th well, this year. I so it's the that. fourth Thursday. The fourth Thursday of November. Yes. Hmm. Remember, remember, the fourth Thursday of November. Have you hmm. ever seen that movie? No. no. Okay. <laughs> v for Vendetta. No, I have not seen you that. You probably wouldn't watch it. It's good. It sounds w- violent. <laughs> <laughs> it is violent, as a matter of fact, even though I don't know how you would get that from the title. But the story is about Guy Fox, who was like um, a rebel in the British Parliament in like the okay. 1800s. Sure. And so the story goes, remember, remember the 5th of November. There's like a whole poem. Oh, the fifth of November. It's the fifth of November, okay. but I was doing it because it was funny, okay, and then I got you it. didn't get the reference, and no, then now I didn't. it's not I'm funny, really, I'm and then really I had sorry. to explain the entire thing, and so now it's no longer funny. I'm, I'm so sorry. Anyways, we should probably wrap this up because okay. now we're just rambling about it's nothing. Just, it's getting real, real insular. <laughs> well, you know what? This really is a whole podcast about nothing, and so if you're even surprised by now about us talking about nothing, then you probably shouldn't even listen to us. 
<laughs> so it's fine. Okay. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you Please very much for follow listening. us. Oh, um, also, I'm I tried to get us onto Apple Podcasts, right? And it says that it was submitted, but I can't find it on no, Apple Podcasts. No, I couldn't find it either. So. I don't know. I'm still looking into it. I'm so, really sorry. Um, we're definitely on Spotify and YouTube. So and go, Instagram. Go listen and, and subscribe TikTok. and subscribe. Yeah, go and subscribe. That would be great if you could subscribe and please tell your friends to listen yeah. and subscribe. You know, it made us feel really good at my mom's birthday that we had people yes. telling us that they were listening to our podcast. So we thank don't really you. know. Like we don't know. We got no idea. Like I don't know. We might have two listeners. We might have <laughs> five hundred. I don't know. I know. Okay. Like, sometimes I go and look at the views on Spotify, and it's like, well, was that me listening or was that other people? <laughs> so thank you for taking the time to listen. We honestly really appreciate yes, it, and we love you. If you have any like suggestions on things you'd like us to talk about, if you want to be a guest, let us know. If you want to be part of our bachelorette pool next time we do it, please let us know. Yes, oh, all of the oh, things. One, sorry, one last thing I want uh-huh. to talk about. I'm sorry, one last thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, Pack Room is hosting a non-perishable food drive yes. from November 17th to December 15th. We have a donation box in our office at 1985 South Wellington Road. Um, we would really, really appreciate any donations. We're trying to have them all in before Christmas, which is a really hard time. And the food banks right now are completely out of food. Oh my and God. Yes. So they're having a really hard time. So I mean, please go and donate to the, the food banks anyways. You can do it at any grocery store. They have the food the food bins but we are doing a non-perishable food drive yes. at my office so hey and guess what they also need things like tampons yes I just want to mention yeah, like that we talked about like we talked about yes a few weeks ago donate tampons yeah and things like um we have a, a sign at our office but it's like peanut butter pasta yeah. pasta sauce canned vegetables canned fruit are yes. the most things that they need so um if anybody would like to donate please drop by our office or send me a message send ali a message i'm happy to come by and pick some stuff up from you i've already rated my whole pan Entry and donated a bunch of stuff so please do that it really really means a lot and i'm having a contest with the other divisions and i want to win so yeah. please come and donate yay, yay. Okay. okay see you next thank week. you bye. thanks for listening bye